For more insight into China's auto market, we're joined by Jack Prakowski. He is the managing partner of global investment firm JFP Holdings. Jack, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Jack, a 26% jump in China car sales. That is the biggest gain since January 2013. How much of this is due to those government tax breaks? What is fueling this? Well, I think there are a couple reasons. You know, uh, as your previous commenter said, uh, you know, there were low numbers last year. So you're comparing against a low base. And there is a little bit of pre-buying in this because the expectation is uh, that at the end of the year, that the government may increase that tax back to, you know, seven and a half percent. So there's a little bit of that in the numbers. But there are also some other factors. Number one, uh, there were a lot of new models introduced in the first nine months of this year, and that creates a lot of excitement on the part of consumers uh, and so forth. Third, uh, and you know, this may seem like an odd one, but actually uh, used cars are becoming more acceptable now in China. And so used car sales were up 38% in, uh, in the third quarter. Now the reason you know, that's important is because when somebody sells their existing car, then what happens is that they then buy a new car. So actually new car sales were helped by the fact that we had a robust used car market. And then the other factor I think that's, that's there is that financing, uh, you know, getting an auto loan or an auto lease is now becoming much more acceptable in China. So that's bringing more, more buyers into the marketplace. So th I think there are, there are a number of factors. Well, Jack, I want to focus on those tax breaks because they are set to expire in December. If they do, do you then anticipate a big cool off in the market? I think, you know, clearly the, uh, you know, the market will slow down a bit. I mean, for the first nine months, even taking into account uh, August and September, the market was up about 13, or in terms of units, was up about 13 percent, which is very, very heady growth considering you know, the China's on track to make 27 million vehicles, uh, you, know, this, you know, this year in 2016. So double-digit growth is something that nobody thought we'd see again. So I would expect the growth to slow somewhat to the 7 to, to 9 percent uh, growth rate in 2017. So it will come off a bit. But China's uh, auto market is still growing. You know, again, the estimate for this year is 27 million. Uh, the analysts estimate that by 2025, China will be making 40 million vehicles. So there's still a lot of growth left in the marketplace. Well, Jack, I want to reverse your part in the pun, but what prompted the government to take that action and cut those taxes in the first place? Why was the auto market decelerating? And have those factors changed? Well, okay. You know, last year, the, the auto market, particularly in the first uh, six to nine months of the year was very slow and very sluggish. And there was a 10% purchase tax on, uh, on new car sales. So in order to, and I think the reason why it was sluggish was there were a lot of concerns about the economy. Uh, you know, the stock market was, uh, you know, had some very dramatic moves. And I think that scared a lot of buyers and it caused buyers to wait. The other factor was that there was very heavy competition in the marketplace. And so the OEMs were cutting their prices. And when the OEMs are cutting prices, what consumers do is they hold back, they wait, because they figure, why should I buy a car today when I might be able to get that same car cheaper tomorrow? So I think there were a lot of factors that made the market very sluggish up through the, the first nine months of the year. It was the, first, it was the first time that the international OEMs really did not sell out their capacity. And so in order to stimulate the market, the government reduced the purchase tax uh, in right. October from 10 percent to 5 percent. And that's where it stands. And, and now the question is, what are they going to do at the end of the year? And I think the, you know, the expectation is they're probably going to increase right. it to 7.5 percent. Not all the way to 10, but to 7.5. Well, Jack, let's talk about that hot market, because uh, what are consumers opting for? Which brands are they favoring? Is there a preference for foreign vehicles versus domestic brands? Well, that's interesting, because actually the, uh, the local brands, you know, they had kind of a tough time from 2010 to 2014, and they were losing market share. However, they bounced back in 2015. They came out with 
a whole uh, uh, you know, wave of new budget SUVs, which were very popular with consumers. And so the Chinese brands increased their market share in 2015 to about 41%. And in the first nine months of this year, they've increased to, uh, to 42%. So the Chinese brands, companies like Geely, Cherry, are actually doing quite well. And they've really kind of pioneered this whole wave of, uh, of budget SUVs. The German brands have increased uh, their market share about a percentage point this year. And the, uh, you know, the US and the Korean brands have declined somewhat. So it's, it's kind of a mixed bag depending you know, upon, uh, you know, upon the make and the model and so forth. Okay, in terms of what's popular, you know, Jack, we're going to have to leave it there. Okay. We're out of time. Thank you so much, Jack Prakowski, managing partner pleasure, of the Michelle. JFP Holdings. Thank you.